Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 4, verses 18 to 20 here. Let's see what happens in this part of the story. Then Moses departed and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go, that I may return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see if they are alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Now the Lord said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all the men who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons and mounted them on a donkey and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses also took the staff of God in his hand. So it's been a while, you know, Moses is not like, you know, speeding out the door. Moses kind of needs a few nudges along the way. And now Moses in this sequence here, he actually gets, gets, uh, he's actually rolling down the road now. He's on his mission. So first of all, Moses secures permission from his father-in-law to go. Now remember here, he's been working for Jethro. Jethro is the owner of all the wealth. He's the senior person. And Moses married his daughter. So so Moses secures his permission. And it's kind of interesting here. Moses doesn't say, hey, I was out there and uh, we had this thing. You know, God appeared to me at a burning bush. And he said, go over there and and, uh, stoke the anger of the Egyptians. Doesn't doesn't tell him any of that. He just says, I need to go and see if my brethren are still alive. Would you just give me leave to go? So this is arranged. Jethro gives his permission. Uh, Moses didn't really tell him, you know, like, hey, this could be dangerous. But, uh, but anyway, he gets to, uh, he says, sure, go ahead and go and make the arrangements. But Moses isn't too gregarious about what he's going to do when he gets there. There's not a peep, not even a peep in the text to suggest that Moses uh, talked to Jethro about any of this developments we've been watching morning by morning here. So maybe it happened, but it's not in the text. You know, Moses' mission, it's, it's really kind of a mission of peril. And maybe without having been given revelation, Jethro might have said, no, you can't go. You can't take my daughter with you. But anyway, he gives his permission. We don't know how much time elapses here, but it could be, it could be some significant amount of time here because Moses isn't just, uh, he's not just anxious. He's still not very anxious, I don't think, to go. Do you? When as you read through this, is Moses... Anxious to go? No, he's just barely kind of dragging along. And so God's going to give him another nudge here. And so he tells Moses, hey, by the way, this is another revelation that happens along the way. Moses, the people, all those people who were seeking your life, they've all died. They're all gone. You don't need to worry about them. And then God uh, tells him again, go. (laughs) He reiterates reiterates the command, go, I'm sending you, you know, you know, pack your bags and, and, and let's move. And so Moses is instructed again to go. So finally, Moses packs everything up and he takes his wife and his children and they go. And he takes the staff of God in his hand. He, this is like, you know, the beginning of the mission now. He's on his way to Egypt. It took him sort of a while to kind of get rolling, but he's on his way. God sends us and many times you and I, we're reluctant to go But if we could see the end from the beginning, I really believe we wouldn't be so reluctant. I really believe if we could see where this is all going to end and how it's going to end for God's glory, and it's going to be good for us and just exactly what is needed for our heart, we would say yes much more. But we sort of tend to be in slow motion, and that's that's not that's not doing it with might. So Moses is on his way, and you and I, as God calls us to act. For his kingdom, we need to make sure that we also go on our way. Let's go on our way happily. Let's be cheerful about it. And uh, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. See you tomorrow morning.